one of the stronger tools in the mathematician's toolbox is completing the square. Completing the square is a mathematical, te mathematical technique for taking an expression like this and rewriting it so it becomes an expression like this with only an x appearing. In other words, completing the square is a technique for taking an expression with a quadratic term and a linear term, two appearances of x, and rewriting it as the same expression so that it has only one appearance of x. The usual way completing the square is taught involves using an equal sign and the rules of an equation to work on both sides of an equal sign. This is not a good method, it's difficult for the student, and it doesn't apply in all circumstances. The best method is the method I'm going to show now, and it's the easiest to learn. Completing the square consists of five steps. Two steps of preparation, one step that is actually completing the square, and two steps of cleaning up. Let's start with a sample equation. Suppose we have 2x squared plus 12x minus 3, and we wish to take this expression and complete the square. Step one in the process, preparation, is to reorganize the equation so that it is in descending order, if it isn't already, and to bracket off the two variable terms, the two terms that in this case have an x. So that is step one. Step two in preparation is to factor out the quadratic coefficient called the lead term. <clears throat> so we factor out a two so that we have a one x squared and then we'll have a 6x in the bracket. Minus 3 is outside the bracket and it's going to stay there as an orphan for the completing the square step. Step 3, which is actually completing the square, is as follows. Inside the bracket, we want to write a quantity squared that will create for us the x squared and the plus 6x. Now the x here will contribute an x squared and also an x for that second term. All I need to do is get a plus 6. If you remember how to square, this quantity here, the plus 3, will double to become a plus 6. So essentially we have come close to completing the square. What we have is an x squared and a plus 6x, but we have too much. We have a plus 9 from the square and the plus 3 that we don't want. So the last step of completing the square is to subtract that 9 that we don't want from the parenthetical quantity here. Now if you just look inside the bracket, what we have is an x squared plus a 6x plus a 9 from the x plus 3 squared and a minus 9. And the two 9's will cancel leaving us with x squared plus 6x. So the brackets match. But they don't match visually. Here we have a single x and here we have an x squared and an x. We've accomplished what we want. Okay, we keep going, the minus 3 is still an orphan, it still sits outside the brackets. At this point, now that we have finished completing the square, we still need to clean up. We have an order of operations that says we need to multiply the 2 into the brackets, we need to distribute it into the brackets first. So we distribute the 2, we do not bring it into the parentheses or try to, so we have 2 times x plus 3 to the second power. We continue to distribute the 2 
over the bracket and get minus 18, and we're done with the distribution. And the minus 3 is still here. The last cleanup step is here with the minus 18 and the minus 3. We combine my terms and we are done. We have completed the square from the original expression. And we've done so without the need for an equal sign or crossing an equal sign for any reason whatsoever. Let's look at some more examples. <coughs> we'll leave this up here. Let's suppose some teacher has given you this expression here. And wishes you to analyze what is under the square root. Okay, we can, can complete the square in place. Stay inside the square root. We reorganize in descending order. Minus x squared, then plus 4x, and then plus 3. Remember that the coefficient inherits the sign in front of us. So, plus 4, minus 1 in front of the x squared, the 1 is invisible, and a plus 3. Now that we have reorganized it, we bracket off the x terms. Continuing, we're still working inside the square root. Inside the bracket, we want to factor out the lead minus, or minus 1 if you think of it that way. I prefer to think of it as factoring out a minus. I get an x squared minus 4x plus 3. Continuing inside the bracket, it's now time to complete the square. We have a minus sign and then we have the bracket. Inside the bracket we get a parenthesis, we want it squared. We need to make an x. We need to make a minus 4, so we take half of that and get minus 2. When we square a minus 2, we get a plus 4. I need to subtract 4 to correct for that. And then put it in a bracket. And this quantity will now be equal to this quantity. And the plus 3, it's still there along for the ride. Now, as part of the cleanup, let's work off to the side. I factor out, excuse me, I distribute the minus into the bracket, but not into the parentheses. The parentheses is squared and locked to us. I distribute the minus over the minus, get a plus 4. And the plus 3 is still there. That was the first step of cleanup. The second and last step of cleaning up is to add like terms. And I end up with a negative x minus 2 squared plus 7. I should say a minus. And that expression can be used for analysis of what's happening inside the square root. Let's make it more complicated. 2y squared minus 3y plus 7. And I need to complete the square for some reason. First I make sure it's in descending order. It is. And then I put a bracket around it. I can rewrite it to show this as a first step. Or I can bracket immediately. That's your choice when you bracket. Once you have bracketed off the two variables, I need to factor off the lead term, the 2. Now this is not a choice. It doesn't matter whether 2 is a factor of 3. We must factor out the lead term. No problem. Factoring out a 2 means dividing the 3 by a 2. We already have the minus sign. Well, if 2 will not go into 3 evenly, we write it as a fraction. 
Fractions show that we are factoring. They show that we are dividing. And they are complete. You'll see what I mean in a moment. This is the completing the square step. Parentheses, parentheses, squared. I want to get a y squared, I write a y. And I want half of three halves. How do I find half of three halves? I put a 2 into the denominator in order to find half. That's how you can always find half of something, put 2 in the denominator. But in this problem, we already have a 2 in the denominator. When two numbers in math are required to share the same space, the rule is you multiply them. Since I already have a 2 in the denominator, I now have a 3 over 4. I'm almost done. Everyone hates fractions, but there we are. Now, I need to get rid of my extra term. What extra term? When I square minus 3 fourths, I get plus 9 from the 3, 16 from the 4. When you square a fraction, you square a numerator, you square a denominator. It's as simple as that. So this gives me a 9 sixteenths I do not want. It's a positive 9 sixteenths because it was squared. I subtract. 9 sixteenths. There it is. All of this is in the bracket and the plus 7 is sitting outside. Unpleasant as this looks, we're almost done. Let's continue on the side. Distribute the 2, this is cleaning up now, into the bracket. So you have 2 times parentheses y minus 3 fourths Quantity squared minus, you multiply by 2. 2 is in the numerator with the 9. If your arithmetic is good, you will see that you can reduce during the multiplication process. The 2 and the 16 will reduce to an 8 in the denominator. We have a 9 left in the numerator times the 1 that we had. 9 eighths plus 7. The last step of cleanup is to combine like terms. So we have 2, parentheses y minus 3 fourths squared minus 1 and 1 eighth plus 7 gives us a plus 5, you'll have to be good at fractions here, and 7 eighths. And we have done completing the square. Let's review. You start with an expression, you make sure it is in descending order, you bracket off the variable terms. After you bracket off the variable terms, you factor out the lead coefficient, that means the 2 in front of the y squared. That's preparation, those two steps. Now that this has been prepared in the bracket, you complete the square by taking the y squared and using a y, and half of the minus 3 halves and getting minus 3 fourths. You put that in the quantity, you square it, and that will give us the first two terms, but it will also give us more than we want. It will give us a plus 9 sixteenths, which we subtract in the bracket. Once we finish that, we just clean up and we clean up carefully. We distribute the 2, which I've done here, and then we combine my terms, which I've done here. And we're finished. Five steps. Two preparation steps. Combine the variable terms in a bracket in order. Factor out the lead coefficient. Then complete the square. Distribute the outside term from the bracket, multiplying it across the bracket, and then combine my terms, and you have finished.